Welcome to my ride along review of the 2018 Giant Anthem Advance Pro 290. I gotta get all that in, it's a mouthful. So I did a first look review. You can go watch that, I'll link it below. Today, I'm not gonna show much of the bike. I'll pan over it here before I start riding. But today is all behind the handlebars where I talk through the bike, how it handles, things I like, things I don't like. And let's get going. So like I said, I'm gonna pan over the bike. And by the way, today I'm shooting this without my gimbal. Uh, I have the new GoPro Hero 6. I'm gonna try out the electronic image stabilization, which a lot of people say is really good. I wanted to be able to use my windscreen since I'm talking a lot. So this is a little camera test for me too. So here's the bike. SRAM XX1 Eagle, Fox suspension. Like I said, go back and watch the first look where I go into detail of all the components. All right, let's go ride. So, this is my second day out on this bike. I'm gonna slow it down so I can talk. I took the bike out yesterday and did some time sections. I wanted to make myself push the envelope on this bike. It's a cross country race bike and I wanted to ride it like one. So it gives me a good feel for the bike. Let's talk about the suspension on this bike. Super good small bump compliance. Probably a little bit more than I anticipated. However, it seems to firm up in the mid stroke a little bit more than my Niner. Now I'm not gonna do a ton of comparisons with my Niner for this video, but it gives me a little bit of a reference point. So the Niner feels a little bit more linear and I have not changed any volume spacers in that rear shot. I have in the front, but not the rear. But this suspension feels really lively, really active, but man, this thing will accelerate. When you stand on the pedals, there's like no movement in the suspension. Uh, let's talk about the lockouts. So they, it kind of has grown on me a little bit. However, if I had my choice, I would not have lockouts. This one only has two levels, locked out and not locked out. <laughs> There's no like fully open setting. Now the locked out is not 100% locked out. There's a tiny bit of movement if you hit something hard, but if you're just standing up and sprinting or, you know, just pedaling along, the suspension won't really move. Like I said in the first look, it does lock out both front and rear when you hit the button, which is kind of cool because you can just whack that button and get into a sprint and you're fully locked out. But I missed, my Niner has three levels of lockout for the rear. The front doesn't lock out, but the rear does. And I kind of missed that fully open. So when I'm, at, I'm descending, it makes the shock feel like it has more travel when you completely open it up. And speaking of travel, so, you know, like I said, this is a 90 millimeter travel bike and it feels like 90. It feels a little bit less than my Niner. I think because that mid stroke, it just seems like it ramps up more. It's not as linear. It's not a big deal. I mean, it's a, it's a race bike, it's not a trail bike. Now let's talk about geometry of this bike. I, you know, I've owned many Maestro suspension bikes and I was beginning to think that Giant couldn't develop a 29er with short chain stays, but they finally done it. So kudos to the engineers at Giant for putting 17.2 inch chain stays on the 29er with Maestro suspension. So this bike compared to the old Anthem 29s, night and day difference. Now, if you have one of those, I'm not trying to diss on the bike. I mean, there were some good things about it. It was really stable on descents. But for my tight, twisty trails, yeah, I just couldn't get used to it. And one thing I've noticed is when the chain stays are shorter and the front center is longer, it's more controllable 
when the bike starts to go sideways. So if you hit some sand or something loose and the bike kind of you lose grip on the front and rear tires, it's easier to control and no exception with this bike. And this top tube's a little bit longer than my Niner, which is a great move because you can put a shorter stem. I actually went out on my Niner before I jumped on this bike so I could get a little bit of a reference. And the Niner can slice and dice a corner like there's no tomorrow. Uh, you can kind of cut into a corner quicker on that Niner. Um, but, however, this bike is more stable. And I, I, I don't know which one I would prefer. Honestly, I need to ride them a little bit more. I can go either way. The nice thing about the Niner is if you want a little bit more stable bike, you can put a 120 fork on it, which actually they come today with a 120. You could really increase the stability and, and make it a little bit more plush on the front end. Speaking of front end, this front end feels so light had lighter than my Niner, maybe because the stem's just a little bit shorter. But handling on this bike is just second to none. You know, it's super agile without being twitchy, and that's kind of the best of both worlds. So we're going up a little climb here, and just want to mention that this bike, of course, feels great on the climb. I mean, you wouldn't expect anything less from an $8,500 cross-country race bike and if you get if it gets pretty smooth like we're on now I can just hit that button right now I'm fully locked out front and rear so I can get up and you know just get maximum power to the pedals so I don't think you can see hills on a GoPro but this one's fairly steep yeah I like I like the lockout, but like I said, my preference would be to just have a standard one because I like simplicity. I do my own maintenance, and the less things I have to deal with when I do maintenance, the better. Let me mention one more thing that I forgot to mention about the rear suspension before we jump into the woods here. I ran 25% sag yesterday. I didn't get full travel and it felt a little too firm. So today I'm running 30% sag and it feels a lot better. And I'll check the amount of travel I got when we're done with this ride, but uh, I would set it up at 30% sag. Front's about 15 or 20. It feels about right. But like I said, I do miss that fully open setting on the front too for descents. All right, let's go into the woods here and uh, get this thing moving. You know, I don't like the fast track tires that much. It's too dry right now. Too much loose sand. I'm not getting great traction with these. I like my Vittoria Mezcals a lot better out here. So if I got this bike, I'd probably just leave on those stock Maxxis Icon tires. Ice bike smooth. Heck yeah. Oh yeah. Ice bike moves. I'm really curious to see what my times are going to be compared to this and my RKT. I don't think they're going to be much different. Like I said, the nice thing about this bike is the stability. It's just a little bit more stable than my Niner. Niner feels, you know, steep head angles are fun. You can just toss them around like they're nothing, but there's a couple times where things got a little squirrely with that head angle. I even had a crash. I was riding with Seth down in Ocala, 
And I went down without knowing what happened. It was like the front end just did something weird and I don't know if it was the bike or what. I can blame it on the bike, right? Yeah, it was the bike spot. There we go. So how's the how's the image stabilization on this? So let me know. Now first time using electronic image stabilization on this new Hero 6. It'd be nice if it worked well because that gimbal is clunky. And the sound is better with the windscreen on. All right, let's talk about a few more components on this thing. Uh, rims. These rims feel super precise. Um, I don't know if they're less comfortable than my Valors, probably a tad. I think the Valors have a little bit more vertical compliance, but I could live with these rims for sure. Uh, light and precise, just, I just can't say enough about how agile this bike feels but yet stable. I mean, that's the, that's the theme of this new Anthem. Agile, but still stable. Um, brake, brakes are great. Uh, I don't notice a big difference between these and my XT brakes. You know, modulation feels about the same. Haven't had one misshift with this XX1 Eagle. Very crisp, precise, smooth. I mean, it's an expensive drivetrain, so it better be. You know, yesterday, when I jumped on this bike, I had been on my trance for a couple weeks. And it took a little adjustment. I felt a little clumsy on this bike. Just with the uh, angles being st steeper and had the trance is so stable. You know, the trance has 2.6 tires, so I can brake late and corner hard with, and looser stuff on the trance. Now, this bike takes a little bit more finesse, as does any cross-country bike compared to a tra trail bike. This bike has everything going for it to make it stiff. So full carbon frame, carbon handlebar and stem, carbon wheels with boost spacing front and rear. A stiff bike is kind of hard to explain until you ride one. Just the precision and control, control that you get with it. You can, the harder you push a bike, the more you're gonna feel that. So, that's what you, you know that's what you pay for the more you pay for a bike a bike that's lighter and stiffer you know components that work better it's just you know like i said in the first look if i ever got one of these i think the the pro one is the better value my best guess is that there's about a pound and a half to two pound difference between these two. I would love to know the weight of the one, the Pro One. Uh, you're paying a lot of money for a pound and a half to two pound weight savings. I think the Pro One's gonna be about as stiff. Still got carbon wheels, carbon, full carbon frame, boost spacing. It's just not gonna be quite as light.
All right, let's go ahead and sum up this bike. Is there anything I don't like about this bike? Well, two minor things. One, like I said, I prefer to not have a remote lockout. It's simpler. Quicker maintenance on the suspension. Less cables to have to worry about stuff getting inside if you don't have a remote lockout. And I miss the fully open setting. So more tunability without it. The other thing is, not related to this bike specifically, but just the fact that Giant doesn't offer these as a frame only yet. Maybe they'll change that. Maybe they're just testing the market. But my cross country bike is the one bike that I'm real specific about the components. Wheel, suspension, brakes. I wanna be able to just dial in an exactly like I want it without having to worry about selling off parts and all that. My other bikes, I can just go with them stock. I think Giant does the market a little bit disservice for those of us who wanna do that. Albeit probably a very small segment of the market, but it's just really nice to have that option. All right, so that'll wrap it up. Thanks for riding along with me today as I geek out about mountain bikes. They're super cool and I love talking about them. So if you have any questions or comments about the bike, if you've ridden one of these, let me know what you think. How uh, does it compare to other bikes you've ridden? Thanks for watching.